So far, we've made a couple of things that we've been testing out in this little example level. But at some point in a game, you're going to want to make your own levels. So let's talk about that today. If you want to make your own levels, there's two ways to do it. Number one is just right-clicking and adding a new level asset. And let's just call that a level one. And when you open that up, you will see absolutely fucking nothing. This is an empty level, which can be a pretty decent place to start from if you know that you're going to want to do everything entirely custom anyway. What we're going to do instead is we're going to come up here to a file at the very top of the screen, which is just off the recording, but it's on the top right. And then we can just create a new level, which gives us a couple of options. A open world, an empty open world, a basic level, or a empty level. By default, you're making an empty level, but we're going to be making a basic level. This is a setup with a directional light, some exponential height fog, an atmosphere, a skylight, a uh, sky sphere, and volumetric clouds, which is, of course, the clouds that you see. And not unimportant, uh, also a floor. One thing that you will note is uh, lacking here is our player starting location. So we need to actually uh, put that in ourselves. And when we play this, you can see we now have the start of an entirely empty level that we can start adding our own things to. So first things first, I'm going to remove this floor over here because we're going to be adding our own floor. Using the Place Actors panel, if you don't have this, you can come up here to Window and Place Actors and just enable that window here. And this allows you to place a bunch of either your own actors or a lot of actors that the engine provides you with. And we're going to be using some of the geometry actors. These are very nice to block out your levels. Eventually, usually, you'll be replacing most of these with custom meshes that you've made yourself which is an entirely different series in and of itself, making 3D models. But this is a good way to block out your levels and test out things before you make everything very fancy looking. So we're going to start with adding a block over here, and we'll add that to location 0, 0, 0, so that it's at the very center here. And actually, let's lower this a little bit so the player can stand on it properly. And what you probably want to do here, we want to go into the front perspective here, and we want to enable our snapping to grid. And let's set that to 100. So now we can easily move it down 100 units. And if we start playing the game, we're now on the block that we just added in. It's not quite a, a good game, is it? Well, this is where something interesting comes in, because with these geometry actors, so the box, cone, cylinder, curved stairs, linear stairs, spiral stairs, the sphere, all that kind of stuff, if we have that selected and we go into brush editing mode, we can actually start editing these in any way we would like. So we can create this to be a little bit longer, and we can also make it a little bit wider. Let's do 200 units wider on both sides here. And as easily as that, we have a bit of a longer walkway. So now we've got a place to walk on. I'm here from the future to tell you something that I skipped over in the main recording here. And that is, using these geometries, you can just use them to create blocks. You can also set the brush type from being additive to being subtractive. Which means that when it overlaps with any other box brush, it will cut out itself from that brush, which allows you to easily make things like a hole in another platform. As well as you can make these boxes a little bit larger if you want to. And then if you go inside it, of course, you don't see anything because you only see the outside. You can turn on the hollow property, which then makes your entire box kind of like a room. And going to the outside, we even can set the thickness of the walls. So combining that with having some boxes which are set to being subtractive, you can easily make a room and add some windows into it and that kind of stuff. We're not going to be using that anymore in this video. But going forward later into the entire course, we might end up with a block out for a level that uses this kind of stuff so i don't want you to be confused as to how i actually ended up doing that and once we've done that if we're back in selection mode we can 
simply, as we talked about in the interface video, maybe copy this over and raise it up a little bit. And maybe this is a little bit too much, but we can see, can we make that jump? I can already tell you, we're not gonna be able to make this jump, like, at all. So maybe what we do instead is we increase the height even more. We put it over that way. And let's add one of our own actors, because we made this pusher block before. And this thing can, of course, push in literally any direction. Let's set the snapping to 50, so that we can actually put it exactly in the middle of our walkway here. And this is a jump that we should be able to make, right, in theory. So we can set the movement direction to be in the up direction, so just going up and down into the Z. Uh, the movement speed, let's keep that at 10, and the movement distance, we can check, we're at minus 400. We want to be moving up to about 500 in the positive, so the movement distance will be 900. And now we'll see a very slow moving elevator, effectively. And we can make that jump. Probably want this to be a little bit faster. So let's set this to, I don't know, 60. 60 seems about right. Let's see, that's a little bit better. Of course, right now, we can't make it on the first cycle, so we're going to have to sit here, and that's not particularly good level design, so you want to be able to time this a little bit better, because this is very tedious and very boring to sit through for a player. So you either want to make it slower so the player can actually get to it, or you want to make it faster so you don't have to sit here as long as we are right now. Or, as we'll talk about a little bit later, you want to make something that prevents this from moving until you're closer to it. Anyway, this is now one of our own actors combined with some of these block meshes to make a rudimentary little bit of platforming. So let's add on this platform here. Let's make this one a little bit longer. So go back into our brush editing because we're going to be adding a couple of obstacles in here. Going back into selection mode, let's put in a couple of these pushers again and put them off to the side here. And this is going to be moving in the Y direction. So let's add the direction to being one in the second field. Uh, 50 speed, and then we wanted to move from about minus 500 to about positive 500. So let's move it a distance of a thousand units. And then put another one, I don't know, at 5,000. So that's 1500 units to the X. And then in the middle of those, so that should be around here, put one on the other side. So we want to put this one on positive 500 and make it move in the negative Y direction. And let's change the movement speed around a little bit to make it a little bit more intense. So this one's going to be moving at 40 and there's at 60. That just prevents these from syncing up. Too much and i don't know if i've shown this before but what you can do if you're using a player start to spawn in your player you can actually click right click anywhere in your level and just play from there and you'll spawn in there and you probably want these to be a fair bit faster so let's set this speed to like 150 and then this one to 180 and this one to 120 and now we can again play from here and see what that feels like that feels pretty good, and we're trying to dodge these, which is relatively easy, but hey, this is the first level of the game, of course it's going to be easy. And then we can have another jump into another platform, that's maybe a little bit lower down again. And here we can add in our sweeper actor that we've made. So we just put that in here, and there's nothing much here that we really need to be putting in. So we can add in a sweeper here, and maybe another one over here. And then let's make a little platform here, going back into the brush editing mode that we can use as like the victory platform. We don't really have an actor set up to end the level with, like a trophy or anything. Maybe we'll do that at some point. And that's just a little bit too far away probably still, so let's put that over there. And now we can play through the entire level if we wanted to. So let's try and make that jump. No, we still cannot. So I'm going to just cheat for a moment here. <laughs> I'm just going to start playing from here. So we can actually make that jump in time without having to do anything too weird or fancy. And this thing in general probably needs to be a little bit faster because it's just boring standing on this. And now we're trying to weave in between these, which is really, really easy still. 
and then we can jump down to this and this also these probably need to move a little bit faster but that's there's a lot of fine tuning in the whole level design thing and now we're at the end of the level now is this the best level that you can ever create uh no no it's not <laughs> it's very basic and rudimentary and just a general block out of the level you're going to need to tweak a lot of the variables on the movement speeds on these things and how far apart are paced out and maybe you need to make more than just two types of obstacles here but as you can see with these pushers you can use them creatively right i'm using them here as an obstacle and this one it's the same actor but i'm using it as an elevator so Something you could potentially do, uh, and let's just try that out real quick, is move this thing over a little bit and copy over one of these sweepers. And if we make this like twice as big and we move over and flatten this thing out, kind of make it into a bridge, right? So let's see if we play from here. It's going to be uh, a little bit scary to make this jump, but this could be a very interesting implementation of this rotating platform. And yeah, that definitely needs to be moving slower. <laughs> yep, we can't make that jump. So we can go into the rotating movement component here. And the rotation rate, let's set that to something like 7. About half of what it was before. And now we probably should wait for it ro to rotate around. So I'm just going to stand here and wait for that for a moment. We're almost there. Almost. And we can <laughs> miss the goddamn jump. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's not miss the jump this time. And now we need to make it just in time to make this jump. And that makes it a little bit more exciting, right? I, I think that is actually a very fun obstacle. And once again, we didn't need to program anything new. This is an actor that we're using here to try and sweep the player off the platform. And here we're using it as a rotating bridge. So being creative with the implementations of what you've already programmed is a very important part of designing a level. And of course, while programming these things, keeping in mind that you want to be able to use them in a wide range of different scenarios and allowing you as a level designer to do that with the code that you've written, also a very important thing. One last thing though, you saw me fall off and uh, that was just like, I had to reset the game, right? That's not that good so what you can do is come up here to a window again which again it's just off my recording but it's at the top bar here and we can open up our world settings and that has a variable here called kill z any actor falling below this level gets destroyed by default it's set to a very very low elevation but if we're looking at where our actual actors are in our details panel these are at about minus 500. So going into the world settings, if we set this to minus 1000 and we just jump off here, you will see that when we hit minus 1000, we die, which is potentially worse because now we're stuck in a game without a player. So as a little bit of a bonus before we end off this part of the tutorial series, we're going to go back into our third person blueprint. And if we right click in our event graph and we type in destroyed, we get an event destroyed, which is called when the actor has explicitly been destroyed. So if we add that, this code will run whenever this actor gets destroyed. So when we kill it. And here we can uh, open level either by name or by object reference. Let's do the object reference for now. And we can choose a specific level out of that. But what we can also do is get the current level name, which apparently we can't get the current level asset. So in that case, we're going to just open level by name instead. So now when this actor, which is our player, gets destroyed, we look at what our current level name is and we open that same level. That just resets the level. That's a really easy way uh, to reset on death. So now when we jump off, we can see the level resets when we die. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page.